Y'all just went to seminary there for, for about 10 minutes. That, that was awesome. That was great stuff there. Um, another really hard question uh, that is common that I'm sure you have all faced numerous times. Maybe, Stuart, I'll ask you, and uh, you guys can all weigh in. When, uh, it's, it's from the Old Testament. Uh, when God demanded the total annihilation of a certain group of people, the Canaanites, uh, and involved killing the innocent women, children, the unborn, how do we defend that uh, God's, it says here, how do we defend that from, as a practice? So much to do with the questions is the way that they're framed. You know, because we sometimes get that positioned and the person immediately is, accepts all the terms and the way that that has been positioned. God commanding the killing of the innocent. You know, there are many parts of that. I would say, first of all, who is innocent? The biblical story is the story from Genesis that we have fallen into sin and all are guilty before a holy God. But when we come to the actual the conquest of Canaan, you have a choice that God has made to work in the real world with real human beings in space-time. He chooses a man, Abraham, and he calls him to set out and take a people, or to form a people and become a land. So incarnation in a fallen world is going to bring consequences. There are people in the fallen world who do not want to allow that plan to happen physically, in other words, so they oppose. But the command specifically to conquer the land People, they, sometimes we hear a sort of an equation, equivalency, that there was a, an unlimited command to exercise uh, murder killing or something of this nature, which is not true. There was a limited conquest of that specific, so it was geographically limited, and it was time limited. And there was a purpose, and there is judgment. So the problem is, when I'm talking to a person of a, a naturalist who re respects the fact that there is no God, and if there is a God, he must be a Santa Claus in the sky, and, if, and there must be some kind of just general love principle where God just welcomes everybody because love wins in some kind of blind way, then it's not taking into account that the biblical story introduces us to a God who is the creator and who is holy and who has purpose and a will. When the Genesis story, when the, sorry, the, the story of the land comes up, we find there's a, the, the sin of the Amalekites is said had, had accumulated. The practices, so you look into the social actions of the Amalekites the, and the tribes in those lands, they were given opportunity 400 years to repent and they didn't. When the people of Israel come in, that land had been given by promise. They chose war and destruction mm -hmm. and the people were authorized by God to uh, then take the land. But as soon as the conquest of the land was over, what happened? It stopped. They didn't go then further killing or extending. They never did that. In fact, we know that they didn't kill everybody in the land. There's a metaphorical use of language because what was the problem? They came back to haunt the Israelites. So if is the question, though, the question that does God have the right to judge? I think at the heart there's a, there's a problem with the idea that there would be a God who judges and that this God will use violence. And by the way, if we're going to talk about violence, the most violent book in the Bible is actually the book of Revelation, isn't it? Mm. So this violence isn't over yet. But is there a God, one who is good in his character, in his will, and his way, who invites us to repent, who has provided the way of obedience, a way of surrender, a way of forgiveness, a way of being healed, a way of escaping judgment? Um, and he has taken that because evil himself he has taken into himself. So... I would, I think, probably work with the person to frame how they're asking the question, see if we can get into some of the assumptions. But we have to read the text as it's actually written and not be, let it be framed as an emotional device against us. Mm, that's a good question.